So, hello, it's very nice, oh, it's working. It's very nice to be involved in the ESOP Young Academics work. And, and I've been sitting listening to all the sessions so far, and I'm just really so astonished at the quality of what you're doing. It's just a wonderful thing to see in the planet field. I was with uh, Andreas Brudi, we are the same generation, uh, last yesterday, and we thought what an incredible transformation there's been in the last 25 years as a result of these European exchanges in the quality of work that's going on in, in, in our field. So I feel that maybe I'm thinking that you're way ahead of me and you're advancing into new areas and so perhaps all I can do is give me a piece of your history. And, uh, and I will look forward, hopefully I shall be able to carry on reading your work as it evolves through time. And I suppose that's in a way the contribution in my own work very recently. I've been trying to do two things. I've been looking at planning ideas and how they circulate around and how people use them. And I've got very interested in that in the context of, I think I'll be doing more work on the history of planning ideas. I find this very interesting. But I've also been trying to do something to make our field, particularly the one I'm coming from, which is urban regional planning, spatial planning. Some of the others of you are coming from more environmental or some other backgrounds, but I'm from this urban regional spatial bit. How do we explain the planning project to people who are not in the field? So I've attempted to do this, and um, I'm afraid I've put a couple of, I, I just finished two books last year, uh, no more books, that's finished. It's too hard, too difficult, as you will discover, <laughs> but you have the energy and I don't. So if anybody's interested, I might put some flags up. Anyway, I was asked today to talk about um, planning as a collaborative planning, planning as a communicative process, and all of that. So, I shall try to kind of reflect back on what has this a particular project within the context of the general flow of planning ideas, what has it really got, what, what's it really been all about, and then where it, where it might be going. And I think the first thing I'll do is have a look at the meanings, because we were talking at breakfast with David Prosperi about slippery signifiers. These words are carrying all sorts of different meanings in lots of different places, and I noticed it cropping up in some of the papers I've been listening to. So a little bit about what are we meaning. Then I want to kind of enlarge and say, what is the broader context in which these ideas about collaborative planning, communicative planning, communicative rationality, within what is the broader context which is giving momentum and importance to these sorts of ideas? And then I want to come and ask, and I want to ask three questions that perhaps we should be thinking about when we're working inside our own urban and regional spatial planning field, and looking at the practices in which we're engaged, and where we should be looking for some of the dimensions of, of these ideas. And I think in the back of my mind, one, one of the questions I'll ask, in the back of my mind is a question that we asked when we were looking at doing this, this book, which is uh, just finished, on, on the way planning ideas flow. And the question, one of the questions, does it matter whether as the ideas flow from one place to another, some of the key qualities that were available, that were attached to the ideas in their place of origin, get shorn off and they wander somewhere else and get filled with something completely different? Well, how far does the communicative, collaborative planning idea carry some of its origin ideas through to the places where it lands. Now, I'm not really telling that story. It's going to be a difficult and tough story for somebody to tell, but it's in the back of my mind as I, as I think about it. Well, first of all, just to kind of situate, that's the case, to sort of situate where um, I think we are, we, where, where these ideas, particularly about collaborative and policy making, where we find them most strongly developed. And coming from um, a, a concern for, I suppose when I'm talking about planning, I talk about place governance with a planning orientation. I then have to define the planning orientation. But if I'm talking in the US, people don't always anchor the notion of planning to place, whereas I think in a European context we do. So 
So we're very much concerned with place governance and with particularly paying attention to the future development of places. But the other interesting question about uh, place, uh, about uh, field work is also dealing with questions about land resources and spatial, not just spatial distributions and connectivities, but how things, how phenomena get <coughs> placed on particular pieces of land, which takes us into a link that is, makes a strong link with environmental resource management. And also, interestingly, we have a whole other world of literature. Uh, we have our own urban regional spatial planning field, the environmental resource management field, is full of ideas about collaborative policy making. And also we find an international development field um, which is, has interestingly quite a rather separate literature. But I think one of the projects which I guess quite a few of you are involved in is bringing, it, bringing some of these literatures together. Because there's a lot going, in, going on in the urbanisation discussions in the international development literature which would be worth bringing in. But, the interesting question when we think about all three in relationship to place and land is that most of the way we've organised government up to now has not had that kind of a focus. It's come from a more welfare focus where you focus on sectors, functions, education, health, economy, etc. So it's been quite difficult in the structures of the government we've created to get a focus in on place and on land. Planning systems have often been seen as a place where you do that. So I think that's one issue. It has not always been easy for governments to actually pay attention to those dimensions. And secondly, the potential for conflict over land resources is intense. So we're dealing with two areas where uh, are not easy for the kind of government organisations, the, 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 collective, the collective management of public space organisations that we which we have available to us, are not very well fitted for dealing with these kinds of issues. So it's perhaps that's one of the most important contextual features for why people are picking up ideas about collaboration. Well, there's been a most, if you sort of look at some of the literature, there's a great deal of literature on techniques for doing collaboratives for uh, engaging in participation or partnership or working together or whatever it is. You could perhaps do some reviews and say what are the range of techniques available and there are a great many. A lot of them coming from the US context where working together collaboratives have been quite well established in lots of, lots of different arenas. So there's a lot of discussion about technique but then at the same time it's quite a strong normative orientation. Coming down into this, um, <clears throat> we're, we're talking about an area we're talking about place governance in relationship to land, property, the spatial distributions, and, and connectivities. But this is part of what actually, how does collective action take place? We see all kinds of discussion about institutional designs, which are supposed to encourage particular ways of doing planning work or public policy work. And I'm picking up this word performative, which is coming out of the post-structuralist vocabulary, I think, but it is quite useful. It means just doing, but we need to pay attention to practices and doing. Also, there's a normative background to it, transforming how governance is done. And on the one hand, there's a kind of, some people say, and I'll come back to this criticism, Maybe all this communicative stuff and collaborative stuff is just a way of a new liberal, neoliberal trick which is being played on everybody and we're all supposed to be sort of doing our own governance work rather than having the government do it for us. So there's one critique which we'll come to, but there's also a very strong normative orientation to building more participative government, uh, governance cultures people like me and other protagonists for this kind of approach coming out of our own particular government context. For me it was Mrs. Thatcher's Britain to say there has to be, and that there is another way, Mrs. Thatcher is wrong. She famously, you probably don't remember this, but she said there is no alternative. We have to get rid of everything and let the market rule. 